India was the greatest supplier of textiles to the rest of the world at one time. Sixty percent of the world's exports was Indian textiles three hundred years ago. It was systematically destroyed during the British era. India is poised, if we do the right things, to be able to clothe the world once again in a sensible way, in a natural way. This question is for Sadhguru, the style icon. <laughs> Nowadays, fashion is a multi-billion dollar industry. At the same time, in the name of fashion, really unappealing gross trends also come out. In the name of fashion, are we crossing the line and how do we identify the line? Uh, the first sentence, withdraw that one, huh? I'm not a style icon or something <laughs> See, uh, for those of you who do not know this, the third largest polluter on the planet is fashion industry, right now. It's estimated across the world, compared to how many clothes, how much clothing our grand grandparents had, how much clothing we have is on an average five times more. All of you seeing that, isn't it? They're saying by 2025, that will double. That means we'll be ten times more than our grandparents. Out of this, ninety-five percent is polyfiber. Polyfiber has entered our bodies, has entered the plants, has entered the animals, has entered the food chain, water, soil, everything. This is one thing that's gone under the radar. Everybody is trying to shoot at that little plastic bag, which must be done, of course, but the polyfiber cloth is the largest polluter which is going under the radar. It is sitting on our clothing, on our bodies, constantly polluting everything because the micro polyfiber is just getting into everything. There are no poignant pictures of a, a turtle being trapped in a plastic bag or something like that, but we are all those turtles stuck in these things. So one of the things uh, that we are doing is, uh, you know, as you know from your history, that India was the greatest supplier of textiles to the rest of the world at one time. Sixty percent of the world's exports was Indian textiles three hundred years ago. It was systematically destroyed during the British era. Over three to four million people died in about fifty years simply because the industry was systematically knocked down. And that's one reason why when the English left, nearly ninety-one or ninety-two percent of the people were in agriculture because all these weavers went back to agriculture just for sustenance. That is why such small holdings all over the place and uh, agriculture being in such disarray, one reason is because of destruction of handloom industries, to a point where one of the governor generals said, the fields of India are bleached by the bones of the hand weavers in 1860, because millions died. So having said that, we still have the skills. India is poised, if we do the right things, to be able to clothe the world once again in a sensible way, in a natural way. And uh, in the sense, this can be economically fantastic. We could completely stop farmer suicides and the distress of the farmer if part of the agriculture is towards de generating natural fiber. We have various natural fibers in this country. Fortunately, I'm seeing the more high-end fashion designers recently. I don't know if you saw, we had conversation with Sabyasachi. And people like this are promoting natural, natural fiber. Well, uh, now that uh, you called me a fashion icon, let me admit, it, admit this. In the month of October, we are having a fashion show in New York City. Woo! Woo. <laughs> this fashion show, I'm not going to walk the ramp, okay? <laughs> this is not about showing the apparel, but this is about uh, exposing uh, the top designers in America to Indian textile, the fabric, 
So thirty varieties of fabric we are… I've already transported to United States, it's waiting there. We're going to display this and <laughs> give this material to them of some part of it free of cost so that they can try what they want and uh, to promote this. This could be a game changer for India's economy. It need not necessarily be handloom, even if it is machine uh, woven, but natural fiber. If natural fiber comes back, there is no other nation on the planet which has the skills that we have. Over a hundred and twenty <laughs> over one hundred and twenty distinct varieties of weaves we have in this country, nearly fifty of them will die any time in the next ten to fifteen years because only one old person, one little couple are doing something, their children have become software engineers <laughs> and it will die in the next ten, fifteen years unless we revive because we must understand this. I don't know if you've ever been to a handloom weaving thing, have you been there? Yeah. In Bangalore, there's a lot of silk uh, sari weaving, you must go and see. At one time, uh, you know, my father believed that I will go into this because my family's… the larger family was involved in silk weaving. So I went there to see, I was just seventeen, I wanted to see how they do it. Uh, I was, uh, you know, cocky and like that. <laughs> He's working on the loom, they're weaving a silk sari. He's just doing <laughs> I'm just… I, I think, at that time I think I'm smart, then I realized <laughs> that's different. And I'm paying full attention and looking. Simply he's doing this, simply one flower opens up in the cloth, another flower opens up here, geometrically perfect. If you have to put this into your software, it will take so much effort. This guy's got it in his head, simply. So, we have destroyed this mainly because of compulsory education. Okay? If a child, if a son or a daughter with their father or mother goes to the loom or to the agricultural field to work with their parents, the parents could be arrested because child labor. So we are determined to destroy all the skills in the country and have a millions of graduates who have the attitude of the educated and who don't know how to do a damn thing in their life. So, we uh, push the education system towards only fifty percent of the time that you spend in the school should be academics. Rest of the time in villages, agriculture, craft, music, dance, folk, arts, many things. For the first time, the central government announced about a month ago, fifty percent of the time is academics. But to implement that, it'll take the way… the speed at which we move, it may take ten, fifteen years because infrastructure, training, you need teachers and everything. So coming to fashion, I think all of you must be style icons in some way. That means you're not just imitating some rubbish that some model or somebody does, something that fits you. Because each body is made differently, there is a certain way to arrange the aesthetics for your own self. For for your body and style is also for your mind and emotion, isn't it? Not just about your body. So it must arrange itself like that and please, maybe right now it's not possible for everybody, at least one day in a week, please wear natural fiber. Hmm? Many farmers will not die if you do just this one thing. At least one day in a week, week wear natural fiber, you may save many farmers' lives because this will be a steady market. If you grow more vegetables, it goes on the street. If you grow less, this… it's always a struggle. But if part of it goes into producing natural fiber as it used to be in this country, we were the largest cotton and jute manufacturers in the world, but all wiped out. Time to get it back. <laughs>